In this video, we'll talk about how I created this material using a single photo from Art Engine into Unity. Okay, so we're just going to drag and drop our image into the graph view. So the first thing that I'm going to do is try to remove some of this gradation that's happening in the image. Uh, I'm just going to use a gradient removal with a really, really low value. So just be careful when using this node. Um, higher values will start to bleed the pixel colors over the entire image, so just be really subtle with that. And I'm going to put this straight into a mutation node with an output of 2K. So what this will do is actually make it tileable at a 2K resolution. And this is the result that we're going to get. So I want to try to get rid of that, uh, that little screw that's in the image. And first I'll just adjust some of my lighting settings so I can see the material a bit better. Just playing around the gamma a little bit and changing the HDRI map. I usually like that we use the, the warehouse one. I feel that's the best representation for my material. So we want to get rid of that screw, and I'm going to use the mutation revision node to do that. Um, so this node is a pretty unique one. It's a kind of like an AI patching tool. So you'll see here, I'm just grabbing the area, and I'll execute. And that's going to fill in that data with uh, something a little bit different. So it's just nicely kind of remove that screw out of that image. And the next thing I'm going to do is use the feature selector tool so what I'm doing here is starting to build my mask um, just for later use. And I'm not going to use the manual selection tools. I'm going to use the AI selections. Um, so the way the AI selection tool works is you first have to paint in uh, two, at least minimum two masks. And I'm just loosely scrubbing in the areas that I want it to identify as my first mask. And then I'll loosely paint in the second portion of it as well. Um, so the key with these is to try and scrub over areas of differences. So you'll see I'm actually grabbing some of the metal parts and some of the rust because I want the AI to understand that, hey, I also want that rust to be part of my mask. Uh, I'm not taking too long in doing this or, or being too careful with it. Uh, so you can be as precise as you want. Obviously, the more information you give it, the more accurate the mask will be. Um, there are other masking techniques that you can use inside of Art Engine, like Color to Mask, um, but I just wanted to show off the new Feature Select tool. So I'm going to turn the granularity all the way up so we get a more precise mask, and then we'll use the AI Segmentation tool and enable the AI Assist. So this is going to take those two mask inputs and then try to identify them both as best they can and then make a mask selection for you. So there's my mask that it created, and you can always kind of go in there and inspect it. It's not always going to be perfect, so it did miss a few of the islands. And I'm just holding Alt and left-clicking on those islands to deselect them from the selection. So I could have gone in there and painted a little bit more, but I didn't want to spend too much of the video uh, mass painting the areas for this mask. Again, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, um, so be as precise as you want. So I'm just looking around the mask and. When everything looks good, I'm just going to execute it. And there's my first black and white mask. And we're just going to use this later on to build our material. And let's make a bit of room for our graph. And we're going to use the material generation node to build the other maps. So the material generation node will take a color input and then generate your normal height, ambient occlusion, and roughness from it. Um, this is a shape from shading algorithm. So right here, I'm just generating the other maps for my PBR material, and I'm just adjusting some of the normal intensity here as I go along. So I'm just checking it out in the viewport. Um, this is where you can be really artistic and just start to tune the parameters to fit your material the best. So I'm just going to play around again with the normal intensity, um, start adjusting the roughness values as well. So just checking it out in the viewport. I mean, notice that when I start to slide around the roughness values, it wasn't really updating as well as it could. Um, so the thing with this node is sometimes it can be a little bit um, slow at updating. So I'll just try to check the light, see what's going on. But what you what I really needed to do was actually um, just execute the node. There you go. So now we can start to see it update in the viewport. So my ambient occlusion is way too strong. I'm just going to lower that down a little bit and just checking out the viewport again, seeing how the light reflects with the surface. And this is where we're starting to layer on our mask from the feature selector. 
Um, so first I'm going to split my material, and that's because I want to pull up the roughness information. That way I can start to layer on my mask that I created. So I'm going to output everything to a composed material, just to view everything. And I'm going to blend in the roughness map that I created, along with one of the segments that the feature selector created. So I'm going to pull this guy up. And then in the blend node, I'm just going to add a linear dodge to it. And this way, the rough metallic values are actually less reflective than the paint. Um, so I really wanted this to have like a glossy paint feel to it. So um, when the light hits the paint, you get more reflective surface compared to the kind of corroded surface below. And I'm also going to use the same mask into the me metallic map. And just checking it out in a couple of different lighting environments before we do our export. Seeing how that looks. So I do have Unity loaded up in the background. So what I'm going to do now is use an output node to export directly into Unity. So I'm going to put the path directly into my Unity project. I'm going to go down to Unity Shaders and choose Unity Direct Link and HDRP Lit. And it's as simple as that. Um, you know, you want to give it a good name so you can find it in your project, of course. Um, but what this will do is it will invert your roughness map into a smoothness map, um, pack up your mass map for you, and then once we go into Unity, you'll see that it'll also drink, generate the full material for you to use right away within your project. Uh, so this is a really handy way to quickly get your materials into Unity without much setup work. So you'll see right here on the side of Unity, um, I am using the new Look Dev Studio project. So if you haven't checked it out, it's a really, really handy tool to uh, preview your work. And I'm just tuning the metallic value a little bit. And there you go. So it was really quick to get inside of Unity uh, from a single image to material from Art Engine. And that is the final material. Thank you.